I'm Chris from Air Windows, and hey, you can do this. Let's introduce you to Tube 2. I can turn it on, and you get this. have the input pad in here this time. Although you can hear, this is a powerful device. We can uh, turn it down until it's a fairly close match and it's still giving you uh, peak soft clipping capabilities. But the whole point of this one is revising it to add a lot of tone coloring and adding that input pad so that you can balance levels a little better. So as you can hear, this is not the same algorithm as the previous one. I've got a lot of asymmetrical distortion going on, and I've also got a strange little thing that tries to make the waveform turn corners in some direction faster than it does in others. It's all pretty weird, but let's turn it off and then turn it back on. Here's the deal. This guy is all about adding that gain trim and check this out. Let's make it be a very intense effect. We can still pad it. Everything's going through that, including my voice. To where it's even a little bit louder with the input pad off. And we kick it in. We're getting a nice clip on the extremes, the uh, loudest parts of the sound. Off. On. But of course, seeing as this is a kind of safety clipper, we could always slam the hell out of it. So you shouldn't have to do a uh, tube effect that is this ridiculously distorted, but if you did, this is kind of what it would sound like. I think the input pad is usually pretty good, and my desired setting for the tube is not necessarily full crank, because this one's just a little bit too intense. The idea is to make it a little bit more controllable, and I think I've done a fairly good job at that. The idea of the input pad is the whole thing is designed around being a safety clipper, so it will stop you at um, 0 dB. And I hear what you're asking. What about the old tube? Well, that sounds like this. that one. That's what it sounds like when you push it. Whereas with the new one, this is what it sounds like when you push it. And of course, if you wanted to completely melt down entirely, That might be a little bit too extreme to come off as being an actual tube effect. It's a little bit too much gain there, but 
it sure is good and loud. So let me turn off that tune for a second. Also let me turn off some of this and dial this back and dial this back. Yeah, so the reason you have a new version of Tube this suddenly is because people were mighty distressed at the way I designed Tube in the first place and so we've got Tube 2 to somewhat ameliorate that. But not completely because it's still being designed the way I think that it should be. Here, let me uh, go back to my regular camera. The thing is, the whole tube algorithm was designed from the word go to bring stuff up to the 0 dB clipping point. And as such, I have done a little bit of work with various things, such as I'm working on a new version of monitoring that gives you... I'm going to take a moment and check that. There's a new version of monitoring that gives you a pad control so that you can pad the uh, 1.0 to minus 1.0 0 dB level that either of the tubes would put out and give you an output gain that acts more like it's a limiter controlling the volume of things. And, you know, it's all good. This is a thing where I'm pretty sure with the new input pad control on it, it's going to be a little more manageable. What you heard from stacking up tube on top of tube 2 is it still gets really unmanageable and like overly fat and stuff. I don't think it sounds very much like a guitar amplifier under those circumstances, but maybe like some strange hi-fi audio file amplifier being pushed too hard. Uh, in any case, this is tube 2. It's got a bunch of new uh, work on the tonality, which I think came out pretty well. And it's got that input pad control to help you get it sort of in check. And I think 0 0.5, which is about uh, 6 dB down, is pretty good for managing what it does. But the whole thing is still designed around everything's keyed off of distorting at that 0 dB point. So all of the delicate little operations, these funny algorithms that give you second harmonic distortion in several different ways now. You've got an overall second harmonic in there, but you've also got the um, sort of high frequency second harmonics, but it's not really being done in the normal usual way, so what can I tell you? See if you See if you like how it sounds. That's the best I can do for you for the time being. And Tube from last week still does work. So if you would like something that can give you some gain and doesn't process as much as Tube 2 does, then you might actually want to reach for just original Tube and see what that gets you. It is a pretty clean way of getting some nice smooth gain. And Tube 2 is also a pretty clean way of getting some nice smooth gain, but it gets a lot more complicated in the process. I hope you like it. I got a bunch of other stuff uh, in the works, so I'll see what I can do as far as delivering everything that people would like. And let me take a moment, and I will shut off Tube for the moment, because, I don't know, maybe I'll just keep it on from now on, because it sounded pretty good to me. But, um, yeah, I hope you like Tube 2. It should meet some people's needs pretty well, and it's got a lot of that additional mojo that people were looking for. That was a bunch of work looking up old receiving tube manuals and things. And it might still make you mad. I don't know. I can't control that. All I can do is make stuff the way that I think it ought to be made. Put it out there for free, open source, supported by Patreon. Even the first tube found its way into other open source projects. So I do not doubt that the second tube will also do likewise. 
Hope you like it. Thank you, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.